I have no friends. Kidding. If you're someone like me though, who makes a lot of content or you like to make self portraits or something like that, relying on others is simply not realistic and not feasible. It's more efficient to do it by yourself. I'm gonna show you what I do and what I use when I don't have anyone around to help me. My name's Erin Donahue. I'm a professional photographer and content creator based out of New York City. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to take pictures like self portraits or create content by yourself when you don't have help. Quick makeup appreciation post before we go. Okay, let go. If you've watched what's in my camera bag video, most of these items should be familiar to you. Tripods are your best friend in order to take your own pictures and get your own content. Here, I'm only showing my phone tripods because my camera tripod was in use while making this video. Obviously, a phone or a camera to capture. I have a second phone that I use for behind the scenes content. This isn't necessary, but since I create short form video like TikTok and Instagram reels, it's to make more compelling video, which includes BTS. Painter's tape, especially for transitions and I need to mark the ground and be in the same spot. Measuring tape so that measuring the distances at different locations are the same and it looks aligned in videos, but I rarely end up using it since it's too much effort. Bringing a string that's one length will do too. This is what my setup typically looks like. I record either with my camera or phone and then have a second phone to capture the BTS behind the scenes. For the demonstration of this video, I recorded the recording setup so you have a visual. <laughs> this is what I do for both indoor and outdoor. It might seem like a lot of gear, but to me it's not, and I intentionally try to use things that are light since walking around with extra weight can add up and be exhausting. Now, there are multiple ways you can get the shot you need, especially if you're using a camera. I'm a Sony user, so I can only speak to their cameras, but I'm sure the other manufacturers should have similar features. The first option is using the Imaging Edge app. This is Sony's product for transferring still images or video to a smartphone or tablet and being utilized like a remote control so you can see it from your phone. This is what I use it for the most. The Wi-Fi connection can be finicky though between camera and phone, which causes frustrating delays at times. That being said, this is still the best option in my opinion because I can see how to position and angle myself. The next is the interval shooting function. I love this function and mainly use it for time lapses without needing an external remote shutter. But if the imaging app isn't working, you can set it to the amount of takes and intervals so you can keep going without needing to run back and forth between the camera and your spot in front. I'm intentionally not mentioning how to get to these functions in the settings because the interface between Sony's APS-C and full frame cameras are slightly different, but you can find them in the same general area just by scrolling through. Last is the old school option, the good old self timer. It can be changed between two, five or 10 seconds. What's great about Sony cameras is that you can actually adjust this on the imaging app if you use your phone as a remote. If not, just set it on your camera and run to your spot before the shutter goes off. This might give you quite a workout though. So I've showed you how to do it with a camera. Recording with a phone is pretty obvious and straightforward. For video specifically, I prefer to use my phone, but that's changing and I'm slowly moving towards camera since the quality is noticeably different. Incorporating depth of field really makes a difference. And I almost never take pictures on my phone because duh, photographer, camera. So it's easy to do all this from the comfort of your own home and especially when you have a streamlined process, but what if you're outdoors in public and you wanna get a shot in front of the camera, but you're worried about like judgment, stares, um, or even safety. Something I always tell myself is I'm never gonna see these people again if judgment is the issue. What matters to me more is getting the content that I want, the pictures that I want. Now, if it's something like safety, that's of course very situational and you need to weigh the pros and cons if it's even worth to do it. For instance, in a lot of areas in New York City, especially if they're crowded, I'm not gonna just leave my stuff, especially if it's out of sight, cause that's just asking for it to get picked up and stolen. In situations like that, probably wouldn't get it. Um, or I'll try to come in the early morning when I know that there's not really gonna be any people um, or less people. Again, you have to really weigh, weigh the pros and cons and if it's even worth it. Many times it, it's not worth it, like don't risk it. I hope you found this video educational and helpful. If you did, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. because you're independent and you don't need nobody. That was the whitest thing ever.